Welcome to The Call, the official newspaper of the Holston Conference of the United Methodist Church. I'm your host, Pastor Terry Goodman, and it is our hope that this podcast edition will be yet another way The Call shares news and information from Holston's 881 churches and related ministries. Good morning, Holston Annual Conference. This is Pastor Terry Goodman, and you are listening to a very special edition of our conference newspaper, The Call Podcast. This is going to be a daily feature at Annual Conference this year. Uh, Just so you know, there are going to be some changes in communication strategy this year, one of them being that we will no longer be able to put the uh, little daily newspaper together on a daily basis. It seems that Kinko's and FedEx and Asheville no longer operate 24-7, and so we don't have the the luxury of late-night production, early-morning delivery. You will be receiving a copy, however, on Sunday of Annual Conference when you arrive, and you will also receive a copy on on Wednesday. So uh, those will be the only two newspapers that you will have an opportunity to read. However, that doesn't mean you can't learn about annual conference. We intend to offer uh, through our communications area a wide variety of ways for you to keep in touch and understand what's happening at annual conference. One of them being this podcast, which will be available fresh each day at 8 a.m., And if you are on the annual conference mailing list, you will also be receiving an electronic newsletter. And that newsletter will contain links to the podcast and other uh, sorts of information. We'll also be utilizing uh, the various social media platforms that are available to us. Uh, For instance, uh, check out Carolyn Lamar, who's going to post pictures and graphics to our Instagram account. And it's also going to feed that into our Facebook account. Ronnie Collins is going to be posting for our Twitter account. Buzz Trexler is going to be providing high-resolution photos, uh, on-site coverage. Uh, So those kinds of things will be happening. Annette's going to be running around uh, talking to people, I'm sure, and getting articles together that will appear in one form or another on some of these social media platforms and uh, preparing for that Wednesday newsletter when it does come out in printed form. So you have a, a wide variety of ways to keep track of the events that are happening at annual conference this year. And it is the 40th year that we're having annual conference here at Lake Junaluska. You know, I'm about to start my 34th year. So for me, it's been um, the only place that I've ever met. Some of you, uh, maybe with a little more uh, maturity on you, have been here or been to other places before. But for me, this is the only place that I can remember when it comes to annual conference. And annual conference is that great time uh, to to get together. It's time to see faces and, 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 and bring back memories. Uh, we gather that opening song, and are we yet alive? You know, there's meaning in those words. There's meaning in the opportunities that we have to, to get together and to carry on um, with the traditions that we have established. It brings us together. You know, my personal podcast is called The Wesleyan Connection. And, you know, that's what Wesleyanism in one sense is all about. We are a connected body of people. Uh, You know, I'm up in Virginia, but I've got friends down in Chattanooga. I've got friends in, in the Radford area. I've got friends all across the annual conference. And these are friends that I will cherish and enjoy Uh, renewing some of those friendships with as we meet here at annual conference. As I began looking ahead to the week that is in front of us, you know, I'm reminded that there are certain favorite parts of annual conference that some folks enjoy. There's always the ability to take that walk around the lake, enjoy the the Rose Walk and see the beauty of this place. For those that like to get active, there's things like the 5K run around the lake on Tuesday. That's at 7.15 a.m. There's also the missions dinner. If you've never been to a missions dinner, I don't know if you can still get tickets or not, but uh, it's a great time to go and to meet with those that have been in the mission field and hear stories. It's inspiring. So I encourage you to think about that. The missions dinner is Monday at 5.15 p.m., and again, don't know if you can get tickets or not, but if you can, it's well worth going to. Another uh, very moving part of annual conference each year is the memorial service. 
This year, I'm told, we're going to remember 55 deceased clergy and spouses. That just seems like an enormous amount to me. Men and women that have served in the pastorate, uh, their spouses that have served right there with them, the number of years of of lifting up Jesus and, and sharing, you know, his story. Theirs is a story to remember because of the faithfulness that they had in their service to our Lord. Uh, the preacher for that event this year is going to be Reverend Randy Martin, and we're going to have a 55-person volunteer choir as well. I don't know if that 55 is the magic number or not, but it's going to be a volunteer choir to help get us through that service. So uh, please check, and, and I'll be letting you know more about that as the time approaches for that one. And also... Another big highlight of, of any annual conference is the ordination service, which is uh, typically one of the last things that we do. This year it's scheduled for Wednesday at 9 a.m., but there's something a little strange going on. We don't have anybody that's being ordained. Now, don't let that scare you. That doesn't mean that we've run out of people who are going to become pastors and serve our churches. It, it just means that this particular year, due to a change in the way the Board of Ordained Ministry um, sort of processes people through the process itself, There, we went from a two-year sort of cycle to a three-year cycle in, in terms of people and, and their ordination. So this is the year um, that we sort of get caught up in between those two cycles. Uh, the two-year people from last year, they were ordained last year, but those that then started in the three-year, well, this is the year that sort of is the gap. Next year, they will be ordained. That doesn't mean, however, we're not going to be doing something special uh, in, in, in terms of ordination, but we're not really calling it an ordination because it's not. It's a... It's a um, well, it's going to be a consecration service, uh, one in which we um, will commission eight provisional members and recognize four associate members. And it's a very unique worship service. Um, it's newly written, approved, I believe, at the last general conference, and it involves vows not only from those being commissioned but also from those that are present. Uh, so it's a very interactive kind of service that we have planned. And so I suggest that you really uh, plan on being there that Wednesday morning. As for this Sunday, though, well, as you're coming from uh, wherever you are, hither and yon, to the annual conference, registration will begin at 2 p.m. Uh, that's going to be at the Foundation for Evangelism Center. That's the second building on the left through the main entrance. The housing check-in is going to be at the Bethea Welcome Center for those of you that are staying on the grounds of Lake Junaluska. That would be the first building. So some of you may have to go to two different buildings depending upon whether you're on grounds or not. Uh, we begin then at 4 p.m. with our first sort of official meeting, and that will be the laity session. And this year it's going to be held in Stewart Auditorium. Uh, that's an important session where the uh, lay persons of our annual conference get an opportunity to get some instruction. There's always folks that have never been to annual conference before, and, and we especially need to sort of orient um, those people so that they understand what's going on. That'll be happening at 4 p.m. in Stewart Auditorium. And then at 5 p.m. in Stewart Auditorium, there'll be a meeting of the uh, clergy session. And uh, there are a series of questions and things that, that have to be presented, and we have to present people for consecration and people for this. We have to approve various kinds of things as the body of clergy. And so it's a working session for us, and uh, we uh, need all the clergy to be there in Stewart Auditorium at 5 p.m. Then, of course, uh, it's time for maybe a quick supper, a quick snack somewhere. And then at 7 p.m., the pre-service music is going to begin in Stewart Auditorium. And this year, I'm told that the Fountain City United Methodist Church Choir is going to be our musical um, uh, offering for that night. And that begins at 7 p.m. And then at 7.30 p.m., Worship is going to begin, uh, and our own Bishop Mary Virginia Taylor will be preaching and presiding at that event. Now, that sounds like a lot, 
I, that I've shared with you, and it is, and I hope that you will um, take the opportunity to keep track of what's happening. You look in your book of of uh, reports, through your book of worship. You need to have those handy with you at, at various times uh, to do the things that will be done. Uh, different groups, I believe, the discipleship team, rather than having a report per se in the middle of the annual conference, the various groups of the discipleship team are going to present short videos at various times throughout the annual conference. I know that my stewardship team is going to just be presenting some slides telling you of an upcoming event. So we're going to try to present the story in a little bit different way this year, and we hope that you can be there. Uh, if you can't be present physically at annual conference, you can always follow us on a streaming link at ac.holston.org. You know, for those that, that don't know, last year I broke my knee and wrist just before annual conference, and I was unable to attend physically at least, but I was able to watch annual conference um, sitting at home in my chair on watching it on the computer, and I followed along that way. It's not as much fun as being there in person, can't talk to anybody um, and share stories and see what's going on, but it's a great way for anyone to follow what's happening at our annual conference. And so I encourage you, if you can't be physically present at annual conference, to follow us on our live stream, which is ac.holston.org. Again, I remind you, we're going to be using lots of social media. We've got a Facebook page. We have an Instagram account. We have a Twitter account. Uh, we're going to be sending out emails to persons uh, that are on the conference annual conference mailing list every morning at 8 a.m. with uh, talking about things happening that day. There'll be a podcast every day at 8 a.m. to go along with that. And so... Listen, learn, figure out what's going on at annual conference. It's going to be a terrific time for us to get together once again as the, the clergy, the laity, the men, the women, the children, everybody, the ducks at the lake even, can join in as we get together and celebrate annual conference this year at Lake Junaluska. Hope to see you here this afternoon in just a few hours at annual conference. God bless. Have a safe trip over, and I'll see you soon. This has been The Call, a podcast partnership with my own podcast, The Wesleyan Connection. We hope you'll check both of these channels again soon as we share more news and information from the Holston Annual Conference.